What's up guys, video information here. So I covered three cheap stocks for the month of May. Now I'm going to do three growth stocks for the month of May. So the cheap was simply low valuations, not as much growth. Whereas these are going to have higher growth. And in fact, they're going to have double digit percentage growth for their revenue. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First up, we have Google. They have a price to earnings right now of 28.77, a forward of 22.96. So it does get a thumbs down because it's not below 20, but it is a growth company and it's also reducing its price to earnings and it's also Google. So no matter what, it's a great stock. One, once I switch over to M1 Finance, I will definitely be pouring some money into because checking out their Google Stadia and stuff, it really does look good. Anyways though, price to book ratio, we have 4.92, so you want it to be below a 5, so they get the thumbs up for that one. Price to sales ratio, we have 6.4, and you want it to be below a 5, so they get the thumbs down. Debt over equity, 2.26, so a little bit high, not even a little bit, it's very high, but once again, it's freaking Google, like... If anyone can handle debt, it's definitely Google, but you want it to be below a 0.5, so to be fair, they have to get the thumbs down. Profit margin, we have 22.46%, which basically means every sale they're getting 22 cents. Operating margin, so after all the expenses and operations and stuff like that, so basically anything except for taxes we're talking here, um, it still comes out to about 22 cents, but they do almost get it to 23 cents. Return on assets, we have 9.12%. You want to be a 5% or higher, so they get the, the thumbs up for that. Return on equity, 18.62%. So they're right in between that 15 and 20% for that thumbs up. And now on to their revenue, 136.8 billion um, annually right now. And their year over year growth is actually 23.4% up, which is going to be even higher probably percentage wise once Google Stadia or Stadia, however you pronounce it, uh, comes out. It is for the gaming sector, and its goal is to allow gamers to play all games on standalone controller rather than a console. So that's definitely like thinking futuristic, like all the games, Fortnite, all those games on one controller that they're just gonna stream to you using their cloud and all that cool stuff. I don't know like a lot about it yet. I have to look into it more, but this was just something I threw together for the video. So they are teaming up with AMD to create a specialized GPU. Not so much teaming up, AMD's gonna give them the GPU, but anyways, AMD has a specialized GPU for its data center, which will allow them 10.7 teraflops of power versus Sony and Microsoft's 4.7 teraflops on their consoles. So much better, um, basically just much better like graphics and everything like all together like the teraflops the power usage and everything it's just gonna be way better and it basically kind of just puts Sony and Microsoft to shame but I don't want to sound stupid and start saying things I'm, I don't know because I'm not as educated as, as I should be on that subject but let's move on so they are expecting it in 2019 but there is no official release date so we'll see what happens with, with that I'm gonna go ahead and guess probably like the fall going towards Christmas is when they'll probably do it like that's when everybody does like their big oh, debuts of products so Google Pixel 3 has actually the best camera on a phone right now and it's the third top selling phone in the US so that's just a side note to add it uh, they are diversified with the smart speaker cloud YouTube etc so the pros we have is double digit growth obviously for their revenue I just had to go ahead and restate that in case anyone isn't listening one of the biggest companies in the world is obviously a pro very consistent and reliable earnings they almost always seem to beat their earnings or they'll have like as jeremy from the financial education said every time you see their earnings you're just like damn that's pretty good but anyways king of search and ad revenue without a doubt the cons we have is a high debt obviously slightly overvalued right now no dividend and a high price per share which if you you don't care about any of these and you're a growth investor who cares anyways moving on we have at number two visa slash mastercard so visa has a price to earnings right now of 34.77 so they gotta get that thumbs down but a forward of 26.24 they're getting closer to that 20 and mastercard has a 43.84 um and a forward of 27.49 so they're also gonna get the thumbs down price to book ratio for visa of 12.43 price to book ratio of 46.89 for MasterCard, so they both get the thumbs down there as well. 
a price to sales ratio of 16.71 for Visa and a price to sales ratio of 16.85 for MasterCard. So once again, the valuations aren't going to be that great because they are growth companies and a lot of growth companies that are actually growing like substantially end up piling up on their debt or just in general expenses and their price to book ratios don't often look that that great nor do their price to sales. But anyways, debt over equity of 0.48, Visa does get their thumbs up for that and then a debt over equity of 1.15 for MasterCard so they get the th thumbs down because we want it to be a below a 0.5 meaning that it would be half um, debt in comparison to equity, but I'm going to shut up because I say that every video, but I just don't know if people are retaining that. So Visa, we have profit margin of 50.61%, so basically 50 cents for every one of their sales. And then after operations and everything, the operating margin is actually 65.68%, killing it, 65 cents. So their return on assets is 12.57%, so they get that thumbs up. Remember, you want to be 5% or higher. Return on equity, you want to be between 15 to 20%, 31.87%, killing it, thumbs up. Re revenue, we have 21.25 billion for Visa, and their year-over-year -year growth is 13.3% on that revenue. MasterCard, we have a profit margin of 39.19%, so 39 cents for every one of, the, of their uh, sales, and operating margin is 56.44%, so they're doing very well on that, making it 56 cents. Return on assets is actually 22.83%, so higher than Visa's. And then the return on equity, also way higher than Visa's, is at 105.98%, something to definitely note. It, they both get their thumbs up there, though. Revenue, we have 14.95 billion, and year-over-year -year growth of almost 20% at 19.6%. So some side notes, I don't have the best side notes and stuff like that for this one, I'm not gonna lie, but I put what I thought mattered Financial cards are going to start no longer showing numbers for added security slash protection and they are two of the best performing stocks of the last decade. Like these two, either stock that you were in, MasterCard is obviously the better one in terms of like if you were in it years ago and like percentage wise profit, but I don't think that you, you could go wrong with either stock. So pros, we have both are very much established and have a lot of partnerships, have small dividends on top of their growth. Uh, debt slash credit or debit slash credit card kings. So obviously MasterCard. Well, actually I'm about to cover this. So let me shut up and just read. Visa with trillions of credit card transactions and MasterCard the most dominant debit card out there. Both receive small increments of money per transactions, double digit growth companies. So did I say that twice? I think I actually said that twice. No, I think I said that in the last stock. Anyways. Cons, we have overvalued and no flashy niche. So basically, yes, their valuations are over flat, are, sorry, are overvalued, and there isn't really a flashy niche. Like, there's not anything that couldn't be copied, but they're just so established in what they're doing with Visa and MasterCard that I don't really see, I wouldn't really see much competition, like, aside from like PayPal. Like, those three are kind of like just killing it, and there's like nobody else. But anyways, we have AMD, so I am going to buy this one in May, that's why I have the little forward finger and you know the smiley face, because I was like, you know what, screw it. I, I do love NVIDIA, but AMD is just having partnerships with everyone, as I'm about to go ahead and tell you guys, and you guys probably already know anyways, but, but anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into this. Price over earnings, we have 89.53, a forward price earnings of 29.54, so obviously overvalued still, thumbs down. Price to book ratio of 22.74, thumbs down. Price to sales ratio of 4.79, thumbs up. And then debt over equity of 0.98, so almost double where you would want it at, thumbs down. Profit margin of 5.2%, so about 5 cents on every one of their sales. Operating margin, 7.66%, um, so 7 cents. And then they do get thumbs up for the return on assets and return on equity as they are at 7.65% and 36.2%. The revenue is $6.47 billion and their year-over-year -year growth is 23.3% on that revenue. So some side notes, they're gaining some impressive partnerships, I cannot lie. Radeon chips are going to be in PlayStation 5, so obviously Sony, and Xbox, obviously um, Microsoft. 
Google Stadium, they're helping to make the chips, as I already mentioned with Google, uh, for, for the data center. Need to slow down, I'm over here messing up my words here. But anyways, they also have a partnership with Tessent that is expanding AMD's EPYC with Tessent's SA1 Cloud. And Tessent is actually one of the leading cloud companies in China, on top of the fact that they have Fortnite and they have League of Legends and... They also have the WeChat with all those trillions of payments. Like, Tessin is a great stock as well. They just didn't have that high growth in terms of the double-digit revenue growth, so I didn't bother to put them on this list. But I am really liking AMD right now. Anyways, pros, it's cheaper but still efficient GPUs in comparison to NVIDIA. They're beating out Intel in computer processor market. That may not be true soon, but I do believe they're still beating them out in terms of, like, getting more sales and Intel's just having all kinds of problems right now that's why yes it's a great time to buy but also it may not be the best time to buy double digit growth company as I like to say with all these stocks so some of the cons is obviously overvalued it's a small company that could get beat out eventually by its competitors Intel and Nvidia as if, if you look on the balance sheets they don't put as much money because they can't afford to into research for better products but at the same time they seem to have a smarter way of delivering and creating their products so I, I, I can't not I can't not admit that like that is definitely the truth at, at this point like just seeing all the technology that they're putting out how cheap and efficient it absolutely is but anyways they're relying on other companies to use their technology that's an obvious con that you have to just go ahead and think and and think of, about I just got off a 10 hour shift so I'm so sorry that I just messed up there but I did good throughout this video of not stuttering anyways thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video make sure to throw a like make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one thank you guys so much for all the support I love you guys video information out